Australia's car industry may have been reduced to little more than a cottage industry, but that doesn't mean it lacks innovation and drive. A team of specialists based in the Victorian goldfields town of Castlemaine have turned to the high-tech digital world of scanning and 3D printing to rescue an extraordinary piece of automotive history. John Fain from ABC Radio in Melbourne went along for the ride. Speeding along the rolling highway, singing the song to the rhythm of the road. Barrelling through the bush in the goldfields country of central Victoria, this grand old machine has a striking presence. But even more remarkable is the story of how one of the greatest road races of its day is still on the road at all. It's a story that starts on the eve of the Great War. On that dramatic day in the summer of 1914, the crowd line the short, twisting 23-mile circuit. The German car leads, but French cars are close behind. Boileau is second, and number 35, Durace de Large, is third. While virtually all the cars in that epic race were melted down for munitions, remarkably, one of the vanquished French flag bearers, the third placed De Large, missed the Western Front and eventually landed unscathed here in Australia. Retirement from the track was sweet until a few years ago, its century old engine blew up and things looked bleak. We were out on a trial run and all of a sudden water started appearing out the exhaust pipe and uh, the cylinder block of water passage had let go. So the decision had to be made as to whether it simply remained a museum piece or whether I bit the bullet and uh, did what was necessary to get a new cylinder block made. As the last one left on the planet, there were no spare parts, let alone entire engine blocks lying around. And just like a hundred years ago, when Monsieur Delage put a crack Grand Prix team together, owner Stuart Murdoch recruited mechanic Grant Cowie and industrial designer Phil Gilfoyle, and old school Naus was alloyed with high-tech savvy to fire up this 16-valve beast. Well. Look, I think, well, to me, it's the best car in Australia. In, the in his Castlemaine garage, Grant Cowie has restored many barn finds, but none like this. Now, traditionally, a set of wooden patterns would have been made, which would then make a set of sand moulds to which the hot metal is poured into. And it's a very, com it's a very complicated casting. So at that stage, I thought, thought that perhaps there are alternative ways of doing it. So, they 3D printed it. 3D printing is typically not used for something so complicated. How did Stuart feel about trusting his irreplaceable car to a leap in the dark? Boldness be my friend. <laughs> <laughs> this is the original engine block. As Industrial designer Phil Gilfoyle was up for the challenge. In this area here, there was a crack that developed between the exhaust and the water jacket, the cooling water. The engine was stripped and sent to be scanned inside and out until an exact image could be sent to the giant 3D printer at the CSIRO in Melbourne. What we have here is a quarter scale uh, model of the mould that was designed and printed by a 3D printer in sand. A foundry in nearby Bendigo poured the block and old world technology meets 3D printing. We did dimensional checks, we did materials analysis. We, we really had to do it because this, this is a, a unique heirloom yeah. and uh, must be preserved and we have to get it right. The beauty of the digital technology is that adjustments can all be done on screen and in moments, instead of another six or more months of pattern making. What's been done is in the, really in the miracle department, it is truly a clone of the original. It's so technically advanced. Several things. First of all, it's a 16 valve engine, like modern engines. But it, 1914. 1914, 103 years old. It has desmodronic valve gear. It was the first successful multi-cylinder desmodronic car. That's what modern Ducatis have. 
So how is it that this high-tech engineering is all happening in the bush? It's no more difficult to do something like this in regional Victoria than it is anywhere else. Like, you know, within my, the business here and within the area, there are a good number of skilled people. Hey, hey everybody, little Sam's in town. Got a dollar and a quarter and I'm raring to clown. But don't let nobody... Well, I'll tell you what. It's a pretty shaky experience to be a passenger. I have no idea how anyone manages to drive this thing. You've got to manipulate. You need about four hands and three feet and very strong arms. But it's an extraordinary piece of automotive history. For years it stood broken and now with the latest technology it's back on the road. But if you wanted one of these in your garage, well, you'd need a very fat checkbook. It's literally priceless. Stay together, so come on, all you 